What's up guys? This month's update is packed full. We got a glimpse of the new dungeon system where they invited some content creators to play through the first dungeon, Amrine Excavation, and we got to see the new weapons in action. But we also got to see the all new achievement system, which I will be showing you and going over in detail towards the end of the video. It's exciting stuff. And of course, we have the monthly update for May as well, which is packed full of changes and additions. I can't wait to get into that with you all. And they finally released some insight on the monetization system that they plan for New World, which I will just briefly cover at the end of the video and not go into it too much. I have a video I'll put above if you want to see more on what I think about the monetization system they plan to have. And as always guys, I'll be making videos on only New World. If you want to see more or stay up to date on New World, feel free to subscribe. It's free and you can always unsub later. Now the first thing we will get into is the massive May patch notes where they talk about the new expeditions, player titles, fast travel points, crafting and gathering changes, UI changes, and more. These patch notes are some of the best so far in terms of PvE and I'm excited to get into them. First up we have the new expeditions, Shattered Obelisk, where you go further into the depths of the Embrine Temple to unlock the secrets that the obelisk holds. It will be for level 35 and it will be found in the Everfall territory. There will be two bosses in this expedition. Electos the Relentless, a powerful mage who stands guard, who uses the arcane energies stored stored in the obelisk to lay waste to any intruder, and Grunjul the Regent, who towers above her army and wears a brilliant golden armor. She protects the obelisk's treasure from any foolish thief. The Depth Captain Thorpe returns in this expedition and he has his corrupted army alongside him. They've made their home below the ruins of a storm tower in the Restless Shore, they call him Master of the Tempest, King of the Corruption. This expedition will be for level 45 and will be found in the Restless Shore. There will be two boss fights, Archdeacon Azelma, a servant of Thorpe and leader of his armies, a fanatic and conduit for the Corruption's destructive energies, and Commander Thorpe, a powerful agent of corruption with abilities to match. He is a massive threat to Eternum, and once our friend and captain. Since we're talking about expeditions, they've confirmed that there will be six expeditions on launch day, and I believe this puts us at all six. Amrine Excavation at level 25, Shattered Obelisk level 35, The Depth level 45, Lazarus Instrumentality which I assume is level 55, Garden of Genesis level 60, and the Dynasty Shipyard, which will probably be level 60 as well. And they have also changed the way you entered the expedition as well. You will need a tuning orb to enter. The tuning orbs will be granted for each expedition quest and can also be crafted from materials around Eternum with the Stone Masonry skill. Tuning orbs have a limited amount you can craft each week and higher level tuning orbs for higher level expeditions have a lower amount you can craft each week. They are increasing the resource cost on tuning orbs as well as making them include drops from high level chests from elite points of interest which we will get into later. Experience from one time and repeatable expeditions has been greatly increased as well. They have also implemented a group kick feature due to the feedback. It will be a vote based mechanic which will last one minute and give everyone in the group the option to vote. There is a personal cooldown of 10 minutes between kicks and some additional restrictions might be added in the future. That is it on the expeditions for the most part. Some interesting things I want to see in action to see how they work like the tuning orbs could be a great way to make money as a crafter, but we will see in the future. Now onto the player titles. Certain activities such as completing specific achievements will now award displayable titles. There are over 100 titles and players can toggle these on and off. 
the titles will appear above your character's head and incorporate your name into the title as well. There's two types of titles, account wide for every character you own and character bound, which only works for the specific character it was unlocked on. I hope there's some insanely hard titles to get that have some extra coloring or something to really show people how good you are or how much time you put into something. Now we have the discoverable fast travel points, which I hope they shorten the name with something simple in the future. These are points distributed throughout Eternum. You can travel to these from outposts and settlements, but they cost Azoth, which will scale upwards based on the weight of what you're carrying. I feel like this is a good in-between for those people wanting mounts. The only downside here is that you're just teleporting there instead of having to travel there. But all in all, a good addition in my book. Now we have the general changes. The first thing I'm going to get into is the housing changes since we haven't seen anything really in terms of housing changes yet, aside from tax balances. They have made houses and settlements have tiers. Each tier will have a different cost and a different set of benefits. The most expensive having the best of benefits, of course. Now, the level you unlock tier 1 through tier 4 is 10, 15, and the last two at 20. The next section will be in order starting from tier 1 and ending in tier 4. House fast travel cooldown, 4 hours, 3 hours. Two and a half hours, two hours. Max pieces of storage furniture allowed, one, two, three, and four. Max number of pets, five, six, seven, eight. Max number of lights, four, six, eight, ten. So as you can see, there will be plenty of room for pets later in the game, and plenty of storage space as well. The fast travel times are a little bit high in my opinion, I would rather have closer to one hour across the board, but it is what it is. They have changed the way you get furnishings as well. A limited number of recipes are available to craft by default. The rest are available as either finished pieces or as unlockable recipe schematics found in large chests around the world. These recipes have a minimum level restriction to avoid overwhelming players early in the game, so players can expect to start finding them after the minimum house own ownership level. Schematics and completed furniture can be traded on the trading post. Players can craft the base version of a trophy, but now must upgrade trophies by combining that base version with a special out item found elsewhere in the game. The most potent trophies can only be crafted by finding special artifacts as rare drops. There is a much wider variety of furniture available both as drops and schematics, and more will be added in future updates. These are some nice additions, and I'm glad to see them expanding and showing interest in the housing section. This is the first real housing update since the preview, I believe. Now we have new additions and changes to the elite points of interest, or POI for short. There will be new enemy encounters and loot placements have been changed. Resources and the distribution of resources has been remapped in every territory to better fit player progression. Corrupted breaches have been converted to elite content and elite affixes will now apply to all enemies in the encounter. The faction missions have been optimized for POI locations so that they will be heavily contested and a hot spot for PvP. The loot chests and POIs have been massively nerfed with a 24 hour cooldown up from 1 hour. These are some nice changes. I hope in the future we see more reasons to go back to these like maybe a corrupted takeover happens and it becomes a elite encounter for a period of time. I don't like the 24 hour chest nerf, that's a little too harsh and restrictive, but maybe it's for a good reason. Now for a quick quest update, added new territory quests in Brightwood, Cutlass Keys, and Weaver's Fin. Added two new quests to the main story questline 
to take players into the Depth Expedition to face Commander Thorpe. They've changed faction control points slightly to help round the feature out a little more. The time to take the fort has had a overall increase. Solo players will now have a 5 minute period to capture up from 1 minute. The 5 minute period will decrease based on the amount of players in the zone, which it has a maximum group size of 5 players, and that will take 2 minutes and 30 seconds to capture. There's a new participation limit to the area near forts to ensure that the battles don't hurt the overall server performance. The limit will be for 25 players of each faction in the area. It's good they realize that solo capping the points might be a slight problem. Now, the part that's going to be a little weird is the 25 player cap. I'm not sure how that will work out. Like, how can they identify between somebody just in the area gathering or somebody who really intends to be in the battle? If not done correctly, the player intended to battle might get phased out of the fight because there's people gathering in the area. Now, to follow up faction play, we have faction mission changes. They removed gathering and crafting missions and reduced the kill count required for quests. There will be a daily bonus on the first three faction missions completed each day and the rewards have been balanced to focus around gaining faction to tokens. You can no longer access the mission board in territories if your level is below the zone's minimum level and they have optimized placements of missions for points of interest, making them sort of a hotspot for PvP. The way you gain faction ranks has, sli has changed slightly. Now faction missions award reputation and faction tokens. Players will be given quests that encourage them to earn reputation to achieve their next rank. And to continue to the next rank, your faction representative will offer you a tri trial quest which you have to complete in order to progress to the next rank. Faction tokens will no longer be required, and you can freely spend them on faction gear and items instead. Now we have XP and leveling changes. The leveling curves and rest experience have been slightly adjusted to speed up the leveling for casual players. The XP per level curve has been adjusted to increase the rewards from doing quests lower than your level. XP from killing monsters has been slightly adjusted. Gold and silver border monsters now grant more XP when killed. Expedition quests now grant significantly more XP. Territory standing levels now grant experience when acquired. The number of XP bonus cards that a territory can grant when leveling has been limited and capped to provide a maximum bonus of 10.3%. Faction missions have had their experience rebalanced to match the new leveling curve. Added a new daily bonus of 200% XP for the first three faction missions completed. Unique points of interest now grant, grant more experience when refilled. Gathering, smelting, and crafting trade skills now grant experience per level gained. Journal pages now give increasing experience based on the total number found. Rest XP changes. Reduce the wait time to begin generating rest XP from 12 hours to 8 hours. Raise the cap for the total rest XP to 100% of a level to 150% of a level. Decrease the rate at which XP is gained from 2% per hour to 1% per hour. Rest XP now works on all sources of XP. Leveling Milestones Bag slot number 1 is now unlocked at level 10 up from 1. The Ring slot is now unlocked at level 20 up from 10. The Earring slot is now unlocked at level 40 up from 20. They have also changed some of the quests and changed how the town projects work as well. To incentivize PvP, they adjusted the rewards for flagging. When the player, when you kill a player, you will gain experience, faction tokens, and items. The rewards are based on how long the player has been alive while being flagged. 
and there is a minimum threshold for rewards. The 10% experience bonus for being flagged has been removed, and darkness events no longer give faction tokens. Town projects have been changed and a town maintenance category has been added to ensure that there's always projects available to players. Town maintenance mi missions are always available and giving normal rewards with no project points. Town maintenance has some unique missions requesting various cooking and potion ingredients as well as more extensive fishing related ingredient requests. All other projects have added a small set of food and potion related missions. I love to see that they're adding more rewards to killing players. I always wanted them to give players a reason to kill each other because that's how you get great PvP. Don't force it, reward it. Next up we have the gold rebalance. They've made quests and other one-time activities give a big chunk of gold and reduced some other sources. Decrease the gap in earning gold from lower levels to higher levels. The gold cap for players is 500k and maximum for companies is 5 mil. Players will now earn a large percentage of gold from quests, expeditions, wars, invasions, and your first three faction missions of the day. The gold from killing creatures, faction missions, and corrupted breaches has been reduced as well. Creatures will not have a chance to drop gold instead of it being a guaranteed drop. There have been some cost changes like housing price no longer depends on how many you have prior. Instead, it will scale based off of the tier of house, which will be 1 through 4, and the prices will be 5k, 10k, 15k, 20k. Base housing tax has increased from 5% to 10%. Coin cost for repair has been reduced by roughly 50%. This is a nice addition. I care a lot about the economy and inflation, so it's good to see that they're trying to take the economy seriously. On top of that, the housing tiers makes me excited because it gives you the option to expand in the future to having all tier 4 houses, and I like having things to work towards. Now for the loot and gear. Over 260 named weapons and trinkets have been added alongside 130 named monsters into the world. They have rebalanced weapon drops so that every few levels players will be able to find a new version of their weapon. More visual variety has been added to weapons and armor throughout the game, which include drops from open world enemies and elites at points of interest. Rep weapon rewards for the starting zone quests have been changed to give a wider variety of weapons early on. Items that you drop have been slightly changed now. Instead of instantly appearing on the ground for all players, it will only be visible to the one who dropped it and it will last three minutes before it disappears forever. Trading, of course, will now only be limited to direct player trading and the trading post. And we have some changes to the maximum gear score. Max gear score will now be 600, and enemies have been adjusted to provide a real challenge still. Crafting resources, consumable buffs, trophies, armor buffs, and lifestyle buffs have all been retuned to accommodate this challenge. To craft items at the highest quality, you will need bonuses from multiple sources like trophies, armor, consumables, and resources, such as Asmodium, and a lifestyle bonus that comes from town projects. I don't like the gold caps. I think gold should be able to stack forever, but maybe 500k for a single person is an insane amount. We will tell with time. And of course, more weapons and armor variety is good. They've shown us a few, and they have some badass looking designs already. And now we have the crafting and gathering changes. The skinning XP values have been changed to match other gathering progression rates. Gathering speed bonuses gained from progression in that skill have been reduced, and it has been moved to the potential speed bonus on tools themselves, making gear score on tools more impactful. Equipment sets such as Forsaken or Ancient Equipment 
now has a chance to drop from creature kills as the base equipment style. Adjusted rarity values on some food ingredients, adjusted perk roll odds on dropped items at all tiers, specifically to balance the number of ep epics dropping. Crafting odds are tuned separately and have not been changed. Azoth vials now provide 50 Azoth instead of 13. Now for dyes, more colors of dye have been added and more dye pigments have been added to the world as well. Pigments will come from a special plant called Prisma Bloom, and you can purchase faction dyes in the faction shop as well. Now for some of the balance changes, I'm not going to go too crazy with these until we can actually play the game, but I will go over any significant nerfs or buffs that happen. You can no longer place the sturdy perk on swords. This is to prevent the perk stacking with itself when put on both a sword and shield. You now get more attribute points for early levels and less for later levels. The attribute pool still remains at 190. There's a bunch of significant nerfs to attribute threshold bonuses. Almost every single bonus got cut in half. Here's the list. Reduced strength 50 melee light attack damage bonus from 15% to 5%. Strength 100 melee heavy attack damage bonus from 20% to 10%. Strength 200 damage against stunned, slowed, and rooted enemies from 20% to 10%. Dexterity 50 critical hit damage bonus from 10% to 5%. Dexterity 200, Backstab and Headshot Damage bonus from 20% to 10%, Dexterity 250, Critical Damage bonus against Stunned, Slowed, and Rooted enemies from 30% to 10%. Intellect 100, Critical Damage bonus from 20% to 10%, Intellect 150, Elemental damage bonus from 20% to 15%. Constitution, 150. Reduction in critical damage bonus from 20% to 10%. Constitution, 300. Duration extension bonus of stun, slow, and root effects from 30% to 20%. The damage bonus from Honing Stones got cut almost in half as well, from 5 to 15% to 4 to 7 percent. Food now lasts 20 through 40 minutes based on the tier of food. This is up from 10 minutes previously. And that'll be it for the patch notes. A lot of great changes in this one and I wish we could see more but I think this will be the last update until launch. Now some of the things we saw in the creator preview event from the Amrine Excavation Expedition are the full achievement list and we got to see a few weapons in action i'm not going to get into the weapons maybe that can be another video if you all want but today we will focus on the achievement list as that's probably the most exciting thing other than the expedition itself as you can see they have everything from basic pve achievements like kill counts and gathering and they have PvP focused ones that sadly only really consist of wars slash duels won and players killed. At least it's something though. This is a good starting list of achievements and I hope they add on to it fast. I do like how there is a achievement for playing two, 720 hours though. I love things that show how much time you put into a game even if it's just something simple like an like a achievement unlock. Now for the most controversial part. It's the monetization system that they plan to have for New World. The one that we know for sure that they will have in the game is a cosmetic only cash shop which might include quality of life boosts in the future like more rested XP, fast travels, and a few other things. They've had some backlash due to how and what they've planned to have in the cash shop and in a letter they released on their social media, they might be looking at a battle pass style 
of monetization as well, alongside charging for additional exp expansions. Now, like I said, I have a separate video giving my opinion on this topic, and I'm not gonna get into it too much more here, but if you have an opinion about it and think that something should be changed or, or not, you can tell them on their official social media channels like at Play New World on Twitter. Please be constructive and not rude, so that way we can all win. With everything wrapped up for the month, I'll end it here. I hope you all enjoyed watching. Sorry it took so long, but as always guys, have a good one.